if there was an awesome tutorial to teach me about the FTB quest mod. Wait, there is. Before we start your Minecraft FTB quest mod journey, we first of all need to do a few preparations beforehand. So we need, are going to be talking about the mod loader, the mods required, and also the version as well as preparations before beginning your questing journey. Now let's first of all talk about the mod loader. So the mod loader I'm using is Neoforge 1.21.1. And the reason I'm using this is one, because it has the most resources at discretion and it's the most updated. And you're probably thinking you're probably using Forge 1.20.1 since that's the most recent updated version for Forge. And Forge and Fabric are the most used mod loaders, not really Neoforge and Quilt. Now, Neoforge, I'm using this because it's the most recent version, but you're probably using Forge 1.20.1, but it's fine because they're mainly around the same stuff. It has the exact same themes in each one, just that this is updated more and probably has a little bit more functionalities. And so if you're using this version, you'll know more and you'll even know more for the Forge 1.20.1 version. Now let's talk about the mods required. Now right here, I have a whole entire list of all the mods you're gonna need. I have all the mods in the description down below, so I'm not gonna explain each one because that'll take too long. I don't wanna waste your time. So these are all the mods required. The main mods you're gonna need is all the FTB quest mod, uh, like uh, library mods. All those mods are gonna need the FTB quest library mods. Then you're also going to need the mechanicism mod specifically for task screens, which we will get into in a later episode. Now, you're gonna need all of these mods and I will link all them in the description down below. So make sure you have all of them before beginning because if you don't have all the mods, your uh, questing journey may not go to plan and you may not be able to follow along. So do that first right now. Pause the video, do it right now, and just make sure you have all the mods, okay? That's pretty much all the preparations for now besides actually preparations in the FTB quest mod. So let's get into it. Good luck, everyone. Welcome to Mr. Stormy's and Dr. D's Lightning Lab, where you can learn everything about the FTB quest mod and many more things. Now, this is my buddy, Dr. D. I respect him. He's going to be helping us throughout this whole FTB quest mod journey, so he'll help you guys learn more and more about the FTB quest mod. So, we're going to begin, first of all, with the GUI or UI interface. So, let's start with the top left buttons. So I'm going to go over each one and then we're going to explain what each one specifically does. So the gear icon is, of course, the settings for the FTB library client config. This is the trash can. This is uh, pretty useless, but what it does, you can basically just throw away any items. This is the quest actual quest book, which you can also get in the inventory. This is my team, which is basically just your team if you want to do questing on a multiplayer server. And then all of these buttons are basically just toggles for game mode, rain, and night, day, and anything you want like that, if you really want those. So we're going to be going down one by one to discuss what each one does. So let's start with the gear icon. So this is the cl uh, client config for the little buttons in the top left. These three tooltips basically help with the names that show up in the GUI for fluids, images, and items. Now, I would recommend just keeping these on default because this really doesn't change that much besides showing mod names in specific areas. This is the sidebar buttons. And what this does, it's basically just the buttons at the top left that I just showed you. So. If you have um, the enable sidebar buttons on true, it'll have the little buttons in the top left sh to show. But if it's on false, it will they will not be showing. Now you can also change the position of the sidebar buttons to be anywhere you want. At, by default, it is on the top left area, but you can also change it to be on top right, bottom left, top bottom right, and then back to top left again. Okay, next uh, we have the trash can. Now, like I said before, this is basically where you can just throw anything into the trash and it's simply just a trash can. There's nothing else to it. Next, we have the FTB quest mod menu and we will get over this in a separate episode, but this is the questing menu that you will be using for making your quests. Next up, we have my team. Now, this is a little bit more complex, but it's very useful, so listen up. So this is where you can have a party or you can call it a guild, whatever you want. And this is where if you were to want to quest with someone else, you can then create a party and then you can actually quest with other people. 
Now, this is the party name, and you can name it to whatever you want uh, for your guild, party, whatever. Obviously, I'm going to name it to subscribe, because that's what exactly you should do. And then this is a description to describe what your guild slash party is. Like, what is it about? What is it for? Anything, really. So let's say you should be subscribed. And then all you have to do is just hit create party. Then you'll see in the chat message that you have a message called name of what your name, what your name is of your party. And then Mrs. Stormy or whatever the person is, has joined your party. We go back to my team. You can see we now own a party and we have some new icons in the top right. Now, if you were to ever want to disband your party for some reason, if you want to join another party or something, then you can just click on this, left click this, and then hit disband party. Now, in the top left corner, you can also change the color icon to whatever you want. Let's just do blue. And then you can hit accept and you can change the color icon if you just want to look nicer. This is all of your IDs, like long-term ID, short-term ID, and also the owner of whoever the owner of the party is. Now let's look at the top right icons where you can manage allies, invite players, and also the settings. So if we go to manage allies, right here you would usually see the amount of players that are actually allied with you or in your party. Now, I don't have any friends because I'm a YouTuber, I'm just kidding. But this is where you would actually be able to manage your friends and people that you're allied with, with your party, which is important. Now this is invite players. Now I think you can kind of get the gist of this already. This is where you can invite players to your party if you're in a multiplayer server. Pretty much it. Now if we go to settings, this is basically what I already described. This is the color of the icon. This is the description of what your party is. This is your display name of what the title, that's basically title. And then this is free to join. Now if you have this as false, that means nobody can join your party freely and you have to invite them or they have to be accepted. Now, if you put this to true, this means in a multiplayer server, anyone can join the party, whether you invite them or not. Now, I'm going to give this as false for now. Now, message history maximum size is basically just for the chat function. So if we go down to the bottom, we can see that there is a chat box right here where you can say anything you would like and you can also chat with your party. And there you go. Now, when you chat in your party thing, it also shows up in the chat, but it is specifically tied to your party, so nobody else in the multiplayer server will be able to see it. All right, Dr. D, what do you think? Is that it for now for preparations, right? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, keep it up. Keep it up. I'm very proud of you. Very proud of you, scientist. Yes. Awesome. All right, guys. Next up, we have commands. Now, get ready. We're not done yet, but we're almost there. So, in order to properly do this, make sure that you have cheats enabled on your world. If you don't, it will not work. And also make sure that you're either in a safe place if you're in survival mode so you don't get killed by anything, or if you're in creative mode, uh, go ahead and access the command prompt. Alright, well, uh, let's get started. Hit slash on your keyboard, and then type in slash FTB quests, space, and then you will see a list of all the different types of commands in the quest uh, mod. Let's start with block underscore rewards. Now, as you can see, block underscore rewards can be either true or false because what this does, it toggles whether a player can claim a quest reward from blocks like a reward from blocks or command blocks. Now, this isn't important unless you're using command blocks, but it can is usually used to enable or disable block based reward quest triggers. And you can either toggle this as true to be enabled, or you can um, do it as false to not be enabled. Our next command is change underscore progress. Now what this does, is this will change the progress of your quest menu or another person's quest menu if you're in a multiplayer server. If I were to click myself right here and then hit space, you can see there is four options. Complete means complete one specific quest. If I do this, you have to change a specific quest that's in the quest menu. But if you do complete all, then that will complete all the quests. And as you see, there's not another option because that completes all the quests in the quest menu. Now reset and reset all does the complete opposite. It'll reset a specific quest or it will reset all of the quests. And that is change progress. Our next command is clear item display cache. Now what this basically does, it um, basically clears all the caches, which includes like previews for quests or tasks. And it's not useful um, if items are not displaying correctly. 
or if you're testing like new textures, but it can be useful for clearing items and get rid of, get rid of, get to get rid of clutter. Our next command is delete underscore empty underscore reward tables. Now what this command basically does, it will delete any empty reward tables in your quest menu that are not being used or that are pretty much useless. It, it just helps with removing clutter as well, similar to clearing catches. Our next command is one of the most important, and this is editing underscore mode. And if you set this to true, it will enable editing in your quest menu, which will allow you to change, modify, or edit quests. Now, if it's set to false, then that will not apply. Our next command is export underscore reward underscore table underscore two underscore chest. Now, as it implies, it basically just export uh, exports a reward table to a chest. Meaning, if you have a reward table in the quest menu and you want to visually see it in a chest, you can export it to a chest. Our next command is generate underscore chapter underscore with underscore all underscore items underscore in underscore game. And as it implies as well, it basically generates a chapter within the quest menu with all of the items in game. And I don't recommend doing this because first of all, it can add a lot of clutter in your quest menu and also it can cause major, major lag issues. So just be careful with this command if you ever use it. Our next command is import reward table from chest. Now this is basically the opposite of export reward table to chest. Instead of importing a reward table into a chest, it'll export from a chest to a reward table. It's the exact opposite. Our next command is locked. And what this basically does is if it's set to false, it will toggle whether a quest or chapter is locked or unlocked for a player or team. You can force unlock or lock a quest regardless of what it is. So this can help with locking quests or basically unlocking them if set to true or false. Our next command is open book. Now this is only useful in a multiplayer server, not in a single player server, because this forces a player to open their quest book GUI and it can be useful for triggering like an event or something like that. But like I said, it's only useful for multiplayer servers or if you're having a server wide event. And our last command is reload. And as it implies, it all it does is reload everything in the quest menu. So everything is a nice, has a nice refresh, reloads the quests and data, reward tables, and any edits or structural changes in the quest menu specifically. That's pretty much it for the FTB quest commands. Now it's time for the next episode. Congratulations on completing episode one of the FTB Quest mod tutorial series. Now there's many more episodes, so keep going. But also, if you need any extra help throughout this entire series, feel free to go in my description down below where you can find every single link imaginable that I have found throughout my journey on trying to find out things about the FTB Quest mod. I also created a whole entire Google Doc where you can explore it, do whatever you want with it, look at it, and find common questions that you may have. And also, all my research, all my notes is in that Google Doc as well. It's the survival guide for the FTP Quest mod. Now, if you need anything else, let me know or join my description down below where you can contact me personally or others if you need any help on the FTP Quest mod, or you can just simply drop a comment and then I'll hopefully get to you. All right, that'll be it. Make sure to click this video or this video if you need any extra help with the FTP Quest mod. I recommend going in order so you can learn as much as you can. All right, I wish you luck, everyone. Keep on going.